Lemon Amiga present. A play tired video review. Game Guide Review. This time we'll be taking a look at Hunter from 1991. There are three modes in Hunter, the Hunter mode, the missions and the action scenarios. So let's dive straight into the Hunter and check this game out. You must collect one general's head and return to the HQ before L1 of day 6. So let's get cracking. Uh, to start with you might be slightly disorientated. Uh, Let's check out these two sheds over here and uh, see if there's anything in there. Uh, and lo and behold, there's a clock, some first aid, a map, and a log book. Well, we'll certainly need that later on. Let's see if there's anything else in this other shed. Some money. Well, that might come in useful, as we shall see later on. God, them birds get annoying. Sadly, you can't shoot them. First thing we need to do is find some ammo. And to get there, well, we could walk, but we're actually on an island. Well, somebody's left a speedboat. Let's cast off and head out into the wide blue yonder. You just push forward on the joystick to uh, speed up and pull back to slow down. In fact, where are we going? That's uh, that 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 is a good question. Have we got anything to help us? Uh, hmm, what happens if I press M on the keyboard? M. Oh, I get a handy map. That is handy. And L brings up a logbook. So those are the Allied stores, and that's the first man. That's the first contact you need to find and interrogate on this adventure mode, as I like to call it. And um, so let's head off to the Allied stores and tool up. So at first glance, Hunter looks a very deep game. The map is, as you can see, massive. It's all rendered in isometric 3D. Uh, you might think this is the first game to ever be uh, isometric 3D. Well, I can remember Mercenary on the Commodore 64. You could jump in any vehicle, fly in full 3D. Uh, with this game, you can only look forward in forward view, whereas Mercenary, you could look forward in 360. So here we are in the Allied stores. You can select any of these weapons and tool up at your leisure. Uh, you can carry quite a lot of those of any type, uh, apart from the big rockets. Uh, or you can press Auto, and that'll fill you up with maximum to the brim. Uh, the big rockets come when you uh, get into a helicopter or a gunboat that can um, automatically handle that kind of equipment. So, as you can see, I've got 96 bullets. The gun works. Uh, so, let's find the first man. In fact, oh, what's this? You might find buildings scattered all over these islands. And at first glance, these islands appear relatively unpopulated. But there are lots of hidden gems like this. I've put up an enemy uniform, which will absolutely come in handy and a parachute I have already. So let's have a look at my inventory. It's already filling up all those weapons and uh, first aid kit there, uh, the log books and flares, a parachute, the enemy uniform, six lots of money and a clock. Let's click that clock on. It's now 11.15 in the morning and uh, you can switch that on and off by going into the inventory, or you can press the C key. And uh, let's have a look at the logbook again. Uh, our first priority is to get to the first man, which is over there. It might be a little difficult to see that little dot on the map. And yes, it really is that big. It's, uh, this game was a, a breakthrough uh, uh, when it first came out in 1991. Nobody really 
gone this far in the genre before. Uh, in fact, this was Paul's last game on the Amiga, uh, so he really must have spent a lot of time on this. Uh, so as we climb the mountain, we can hear the, the breeze rushing by, and it's going to be a long walk unless we... Oh, what's this? We've, we've found a tank! And just walking into any vehicle will automatically set us off in first gear. There's a helicopter, we'll visit that thing a bit later on. So let's speed down to the first man. Uh, you might notice I'm playing this on the R30 Amiga. Sometimes I'll speed up this footage because this is a long review. It's 40 minutes. Let's just check this place out. There's some flares and some more fuel. Always come in handy. Nice lamp. And let's set off. Uh, where is that thing? It should be on this island. Ah, so you might struggle to get across. You might think you might not be able to get across those, but a little wiggle you can do. And he should be in this little hut. So if we pile in there and chat him up, what's he gonna say? Go to the old man at location 181197. What does that mean? Well, if we go to the logbook and add item, we can add any name we choose, uh, old man. And uh, the coordinates are, are at the bottom, 181197. So there he is on that little island. So that's how far we have to travel in that general direction. So let's get on with it, shall we? Let's not kill him or else we'll lose points. Um, one thing that might not be apparent in the game is we're actually on a friendly island. You'll see a friendly flag there uh, on the horizon. Let's have a look at that. There it is, the green one. Uh, which is divided, that basically says this side of the map is friendly and the other side is the enemy and anything you blow up on the friendly island will take score away so that's not very uh, helpful so just as we run out of fuel let's explore this helicopter and uh, helicopters are really, really are the best fun in this game so let's get in there, this is a cargo helicopter to fly one of these you select the gun by pressing return to make sure you're in gun mode, push forward on the joystick to engage first gear and hold down fire to instigate the, uh, the accelerator and up he goes, you can pull forward to accelerate, pull back to brake and when you release the fire button uh, you can fly around the sky uh, as normal uh, as I say, if you want to decelerate you'll have to hold down the fire button like this and pull back and if you've got a gun selected, it will fire off a few rounds. That's kind of a bug in the game. That's so that uh, because your helicopter is equipped with rockets, you can fire in mid-air. But you have to hold down the fire button to uh, uh, instigate the gearbox. So that's not really a good idea. Uh, and in this uh, hut, it's always ex good to explore these uh, silos, these hangars. Just see if there's anything in there. And this is a, a hospital complex, let's just make sure we're fully topped up with the medikits, you will definitely need some of those. And if we go to the logbook and add the item, you'll notice in the uh, bottom corner of the map, you'll see 161 uh, is our uh, x-axis and uh, 077 there is our y-axis. We can add that into the logbook as the first aid, and that means if ever I need to come back to that spot, there it is. That's very handy. So... Let's put the old man back on, and ignoring the uh, the body wagon, let's get back into the helicopter. Forward, hold down fire, and off we go. Oh, something in the way, the van's got in the way, and I didn't reach altitude. So let's try and pull back. Oh, and I've blown the van up. Well, that's one way to do it. Sometimes if you hold down fire and pull back, it will take off in reverse, which is another handy tip. But uh, I ended up blowing up the obstacle. So there's a church there, there's uh, quite a few rabbits hopping around as well, there are ducks and other animals, there's uh, a bull, there's another rabbit, another helicopter. So uh, it doesn't usually take long to find a vehicle in this game, if you get blown out of the skies, which you'll see later, uh, the, there are usually hangers and other things uh, that you can find on the map and we will uh, discover a quick way to locate those a little later on. Let's just have a look in here. Nothing. That was well done. Uh, so let's climb back in the Huey. This cargo helicopter, there are two types of helicopter in this game. 
the cargo helicopter is slower as an enemy soldier. Uh, it doesn't really gain much altitude. So you can't uh, gain altitude to um, outmaneuver the enemy's firepower. And because we're on friendly islands, we haven't seen any of that yet. Uh, so it's bulky and slow, but it's uh, easy to fly, perhaps. So let's scout around. These are wind turbines, so we've obviously got the new uh, power all lined up there in 1991. And uh, let's uh, since, since these are enemy islands, I can now blow these up. So let's hop down and uh, get out of there and blow those up. And it throws me quite a distance away. Uh, and if I go anywhere near the helicopter, it will automatically put me in there. So that's definitely one to watch out for. So, blowing things up 101. The easiest way to do it is to use the explosives. They're timed explosives and they're great for close quarters. They really are uh, great for uh, planting those where precisely where you really need those. It's a guaranteed kill. They are really uh, explosive. They are really powerful explosives, so you can blow up anything with those. Um, here's another one. Uh, so let's take out this one with a SAM, surface to air missile. And uh, you really, yeah, let's, let's line ourselves up with that. Missed again, third time lucky. So you can blow up any high target with a surface to air missile, uh, watchtowers or the helicopters, uh, bunkers if you stand close enough. And uh, that's also a very general, uh, powerful general weapon. What else have we got? Mines? No, that's no good. What about a hand grenade? If you throw a hand grenade, it will uh, hover in midair in the item to show that it's locked on. Those are sticky grenades, so it will lock onto a target, such as a moving tank. What else have we got? We've got the rocket launcher. Let's line that up. We can blow things up with a rocket launcher, just like that. And look at this. Behold, we find a key. Uh, I wonder what that does. We've taken the master key. Um, well... Let's head back to the chopper and ask the old man. And uh, while we're on the enemy island, let's put on the enemy uniform. Um, because what does that do? Well, sometimes if there are enemies in the area, they'll avoid firing at us. And uh, sometimes if there are uh, surface to air missiles, but I really haven't found much, uh, much use for those. So I've just... Um, selected the fuel to add some more fuel to the fuel tank you can press uh, I think it's L for the fuel I think it's F for flares must double check that and now we've found a lighthouse well let's remove the enemy uniform so that he knows that I'm on the right side and there's an old man there uh, so if I walk into him uh, look soldier I'm just a poor man so what happens if I give him some money thank you for the money Look, soldier, I'm just a poor man. Let's give him some more money. Thank you for the money. Oh, dear. Well, when you keep this up for half an hour, it finally uh, divulges the coordinates of the master key and your second contact, and the second contact will put you further on to the mission. So, in the adventure mode, you'll find contacts all over the map, which will send you all over the map to do ridiculous things sometimes, collect things, chat people up, destroy things, and... Um, it will take you six days probably to do that. We're still on the first day. Uh, and as you might notice, the sky has got a little darker as well. I wonder what that's all about. It's 1900. So this was probably the first game in the world, as far as I know, that made use of lighting effects to make the game get lighter and darker. Um, let's just turn the helicopter's engine off there. You can leave the engine running. <laughs> it's another one of those quirks in the game. Uh, let's get rid of this... Uh, this surface to, well, what, what is it? It's a general rocket launcher that fires uh, rockets. It can destroy uh, surface targets or air targets. So let's plant the explosives to make sure that guy is gone. This is the uh, surface to air missile launcher. As you can see, it's a big old thing. It can fire uh, uh, 120 millimeter cannons up there, and they are uh, heat seeking, so you want to get rid of those. Um, and as we shall see later on, those are uh, radar guided. The, there's a guy over there as well, uh, and a and a small gun post. Let's not get too close to those. I'm, I'm I have the enemy uniform, so hopefully I won't get spotted. Uh, what is your business here? Sometimes you can give these guys money, and they will divulge uh, coordinates to other locations.
as seen in the Jim Plays Games version online. But this guy isn't for divulging any information, so let's sneak into the HQ. You need security pass to enter this fort. Oh dear. Well, the least we can do is see you off. Let's uh, let's have you speaking on high notes and boom, he disappears. That's that's another good thing in the game. Uh, everything blows into smithereens. So let's head back to the helicopter. Um, yeah, I don't have many points uh, at this stage, but the game will uh, uh, give me more points as the uh, days and nights progress. So what can I show you while we're while we're floating around this uh, vicinity? Um, we won't continue with the adventure mode. I'll leave that for you to do uh, to discover. But uh, we will uh, hover around these islands. There's another type of uh, vehicle, a uh, gun vehicle, and uh, there are many, many, many types of uh, vehicle in this game. There's a car down there, uh, a rowing boat. Uh, this is deep into enemy territory, so this is probably as far as I can go without getting blown out of the sky. Let's have a look, see what we've got there. If you press A, you'll trigger the uh, aerial observation unit, and that'll show these guys the vehicles, the uh, rowing boat and the boat we saw, the structures, and the ground guns. The ground guns of the enemy started there, and a couple of mines there in the top corner. So let's head out there and see what we can find. There's an enemy flag, we'll, sort of, we'll also get points for blowing that thing up. And uh, let's head out into the mountains. I don't seem to be coming across the enemy guy, all to the better. And this structure ends up being a radar unit for this quadrant of the, uh, of the map. So select your favourite weapon. What have we got? We've no SAMs, that's the favourite one. Uh, grenades, that'll do. Let's fire a grenade. Lock onto the target, away you go. Uh, I get 60 credits for that. Um, anything else in the vicinity? I don't think so. That guy isn't sh uh, showing up. That the, the the radar is blank. That's the central black square in the centre bottom of the map. You can pick up radar, but on the adventure mode it costs you. Oh look at this! I've picked up the grenades. I've been firing the grenades and I've destroyed the helicopter. So that's definitely one to watch out for. Always remember to select the gun when entering the helicopter because if you hold down fire to push forward to accelerate the thing, you might just fire your weapon and blow yourself up. You might notice I've just launched a flare there. It's getting so dark. It's now gone midnight. Um, it's getting so dark I can barely see where I'm going. And that's a really good feature of the game. Uh, let's not waste effort blowing that flag up. Uh, but yeah, the helicopters, that's a lesson learnt the hard way. The uh, the forward and back and the fire button together. Sometimes it doesn't do that, but most times it does. Let's have a look at this. This is the robot. And as you can imagine, the advantages of using the robot is it doesn't attract enemy fire. Any missile guided targets that might lock onto the speedboat won't have uh, a lock on with the robot. But the disadvantage of that is the robot is a lot slower. So always go for the speedboat over the robot. Here's a, here's a missile locked on for one of those land-based rocket cannons. Let's get out there before it gets a full advantage on us. And they will loop around and uh, cause havoc in all kinds of places. So let's select our favourite destructive weapon. I've one left. Place the mine there and off it goes. Let's dispatch on that one. So while we're on these islands, Oh, look at that. I've, I've, I've kept it going there in, uh, in, in a full lock-on. And uh, while I've got these islands, I've got some 80mm shells there. 15, in fact. So let's use those up. Let's, uh, there's, a, there's another sky cannon. Let's get rid of that. And it's another novelty in this game, being able to fire s the same weapons or similar weapons. Uh, in the vehicles as well. Each vehicle, each armoured vehicle, uh, army vehicle should have a selection of weapons on board. The helicopters will have missiles. Uh, that's apart from the hovercraft and special vehicles like that. There are vehicles you wouldn't even think of in this game. So we've just entered a, a hut and we're picking up aerial observation units. We'll, we'll need those to pick up our remote map. 
uh, and as you may have saw, that was uh, full of uh, landmines, so it really is difficult to, uh, <laughs> you know, you can't put the enemy down in this game, they will mine the areas, uh, they, won't, they won't make it easy. Uh, it might look very easy, but it's dark and uh, there's not much going on. Rest assured if it was in a helicopter at this point, uh, those guns would be more than active. So it really depends what we uh, what we come across. Oh, there's a guy there. So it's the art of lining up bullets to kill these guys. And there's another dispatch. And, oh, what's this? It's, uh, it's a communication shed. Let's head on in there with the uniform on, with the gun out, and see who's in there. Sometimes there's guns and guys. Oh, it's deserted. But we find... Security passes. So... That's the security pass that were required to get into the enemy bunkers earlier on. So if you find any items on the map, uh, they're guaranteed to be part of the mission. So um, I picked that up early, but somebody will guarantee to send you in there at some point to pick up some item. So that gives you an idea of the uh, of the system. It's better. It really is better to do the mission in the mission order talk to the guys in the right order, don't pick things up in advance. Sometimes, uh, particularly the lighthouse guy, if you pick up that master key in advance and speak to him, he might not always divulge the, the location of the second man, which leaves you stranded. And for God's sake, don't blow up any friendly contacts, otherwise you will be stranded and it's game over. The sound effects are really good as well in Hunter. Every vehicle seems to have its own sound effect and you get to hear the wind and the waves to create a generally deep atmosphere, uh, kind of oppressive really when it gets to night, but it creates a very nice sound effects uh, archive there. You can use mouse and joystick simultaneously on this game, so that's a novelty, and keyboard incidentally, so you might be able to change the weapon with the keyboard while selecting the, uh, the inventory with the mouse and guiding the guy around with the joystick. That was a fuel dump for 150 credits. They are worth a lot. Let's take out the other one. Oh, I missed it. That's good on you. Uh, what else have I got? Uh, before I leave this spot, grenades. That's always a, that's always a good one. Maneuver around. And yeah, aim and fire. Because this is a nice metric 3D map. Uh, it's all about coordinates. So there's a guy though, and a, and a sea mine. Good job I didn't take him on, or I might have backed into the sea mine. There's no inertia in this game, so there's no wave being created. Uh, the uh, the frame rate on the 500 is slow enough as it is on this game, so you really do need a, an Amiga 3000, 4000, something with a bit of weight behind it to play this game at any kind of decent frame rate, which you need. And you might notice there that the uh, the rocket launcher wasn't powerful enough to blow away that. Uh, missile launcher with one hit it required two and we're actually getting low on weapons now let's see where we are there's still a lot going on in this map lots of guys and vehicles uh they're really quiet at this time in the morning i think i've used the last of my flares now it should be warming up now it's approaching five o'clock uh, but i happen to know there's an airport in this vicinity so the best thing to do in my position is get a helicopter and uh, get back and resupply the uh, the armaments as quickly as possible and then I can get out there and keep on blowing up. What's in here? A tank! And sometimes when you enter one of these hangars you drive straight out there in whatever it is and in the missions we really have to get a move on. Sometimes the enemies will blow you up. Uh, as I say, those, those rocket launchers in the daytime, they really will blow up any moving targets so you have to be on your guard and you will be desperate, desperate, desperate to get a fast vehicle like this. This is the army helicopter. Let's select the gun, shall we? Uh, forward and fire. Um, you can get some uh, points by blowing up the control tower, but let's not do that. Where are we going? Let's get back to the Allied stores. That's a good idea. Um, and the advantage with the uh, army helicopter is not only can it gain higher altitude, so it can... Um, uh, outmaneuver those ground guns, they can only go up to a certain altitude without uh, running out of fuel, so you can literally rise above the enemy if that's what you want to do. So that's one advantage, this, uh, this helicopter is a lot more nimble, and look at this, you can pinpoint precise 
precisely the spot you need to land it's uh, a lot quicker it's a lot uh, more responsive so I like the uh, the army helicopter let's just take off the enemy uniform since I'm walking to my own stories because they might just kick you out and they do uh, automatically select the weapons and let's get on with it so let's fast forward then uh, other things you might find in this game um, hairs <laughs> uh, this is actually a central uh, expanse this is kind of a, a quiet island it has to be said uh, but amongst the uh, flora and fauna you will find this tree stump which has a shaman in there and he will be a key asset to you in this adventure mode in this hunting mode look at that there's enemy helicopters you'll have uh, heard the sound of helicopters enemy helicopters there are also enemy tanks yes the enemy can jump into their own vehicles and track you down foot soldiers can jump into vehicles and maul you over uh, when you're getting chased by things uh, you, th that is all possible in this game, you haven't seen much of it, but the action does continue if you're playing the actual story. Oh look at that! An anti a flat gun's blown me out of the sky simply by decelerating and I, I I crashed into the landscape. That's not very well played, but that's what happens in the frustration of battle. So let's try and get rid of uh, it with, with our newfound explosives. There you go, let's get rid of that and head on into uh, another key feature of the adventure mode this is a what is that this is a kind of a nuclear power station is it a power plant yeah speak to this guy he's another key asset uh he's wandered out there what, what's he have to say oh get me the nuclear device at location x28 y227 so easiest thing to pop that into the logbook and find out where that is zero twenty eight remember the zero two two seven so look at that I should be in this kind of an area look at this deep in enemy territory and uh well the enemy territory is divided like i say it's split in half so this half is as much into enemy territory as you can get so expect that to be heavily defended so Yes, you guessed it. Let's get on in there. Uh, so, the first thing we need to do is track down the vehicle. I've managed to blow myself the best army helicopter away. So, there's plenty of buildings that I, could, that I can explore for extra weaponry if I chose. But it's the vehicles I'm looking out for. Those two in the bottom right are obviously land vehicles. And the, the two on the island on the bottom are... Well, they must be boats because they're on an island. So... Uh, I could get the land based vehicles but that's not really going to save me a lot of time you can swim in this game and your life energy will drop steadily as you swim and if you're bleeding at the time you will find sharks in, in the water as well uh, and an enemy submarine as well uh, things like that that will drag you under the water very nice touches so let's try and sneak into that area then is it going to be easy? No the enemy's laid a lot of landmines in the area so let's line that boat up and take it easy through those things. If I blow my boat up, it's going to be a long, long walk back. What else is there in this area? Oh, look at this. Well, why drive when you can fly? That's what I say. Pile into this. And it comes with 28 rockets. That might come in useful. So it's 10 o'clock in the morning. We're in broad daylight. And there's a guard tower. What else do we have? I can hear something. There's a HQ. There's plenty of flat guns. Let's blow. Let's try and blow them out. Sometimes you can use these missiles as bombs, and it works. You can register on the bottom of the screen if that works, but it hasn't. What else is there? Some more. Some guns lining up to kill me up. <laughs> a blow. A tank. Another gun. Let's just avoid those. I'm surprised. I really am surprised. I haven't been blown up. Well, there's the answer to that, basically don't speak too soon, commentators curse uh, sometimes you can zoom up there with the mouse pointer and select your parachute, you can float down with the parachute uh, what's this, some timed explosives, I'm going to need them sneak around that mine that somebody's laid there to blow me up and 
where am I? What am I doing? Oh, I'm, I'm still after the nuclear device. Let's put the uniform on. And it should be around here somewhere. These buildings. Let's check these out. What is there in there? Death. That's not the right one. <laughs> Let's have a look in this one. What is there? That's, that's a bomb. That's death. Uh, oh, all right then. Well, uh, let's let's not try and blow up that middle building. Let's precisely lay some kind of explosive in that area. Leave it for dead. And check out this middle one. This is my last hope. This is my last chance. It better be in there. Past these electromagnets, whatever they are. Nuclear device. You always find two in case, for whatever reason, you lose one. I've never lost an item in the game yet. So that's it, that's the adventure mode. Let's skip on to the missions. What's the missions all about? Well, that, that might take you just as long as the hunter mode, to be honest. These, destroy one fuel dump. Uh, you've got 17 hours to do it. Well, that's plenty of time, given we're starting at zero, basically, in the morning. Uh, these missions get progressively harder as you go through. They will uh, send you on wild goose chases to bull penny for in anything from shark steins to uh, guns um, uh, to radar units and that kind of thing all over the map. So on this one we've got uh, a fuel dump. Uh, so there's the there's the boat ready to whisk us away, uh, and we've already picked up the radar unit. Oh look at that! There's a, a helicopter as well. But before we get on with that, we're going to need some more ammo. Uh, so I suppose I could blow it away with a gun, but um, my preferred weaponry is to uh, be ready <laughs> for, the, for those enemies. Let's get the full... Uh, uh, yeah, it's always advisable to enter the stores straight away, just in case. Uh, this game always looks easy, but there's a certain kind of atmosphere to this game as well. There are... I mean, it, it, oh, there's no more weapons in that gun, it's just the four rounds. Let's see where we're going. Worth a try anyway. Uh, the graphics, they are simple. They, they, they look 16 colours to me. Uh, and that isn't a... Uh, oh, look at this! A windsurfer! Slow, but handy. You might not notice the guy's stripped there while he's, there, uh, while he's surfing that. Let's get out of there. Uh, yeah, that, that is... that's another last resort toy you can play with. Uh, no uh, fingerprint on the radar, of course, with the windsurfer. What's this? A shark sign? It's just a shark sign, you might think, but yeah, let's get rid of it. Why? Well, a key question is, where are the, uh, the things that the, uh, the, the, this, the, the, the missions are going to send you to? And that's one of them, the shark signs. The uh, part of the mission is to destroy those shark signs later in the game. And let's zoom in there by pushing the, uh, the, the forward buttons and line up to destroy these. Yeah, part of the game is to destroy those shark signs later on, so a key element in the missions has to be said that you have to blow things up early. And there we go, we've just destroyed the fuel dump. Return to base. And what does that have to say for itself? Some good credits. Well, that's a decent score for blowing up a few things with a boat. One radar unit, one comms hook. And the faster I completed the uh, the previous mission, the more time I'll get to complete the next one. So if it had driven straight towards the objective, I would have uh, had more time to play on this mission. Uh, but I chose to get the weapons instead. So to make life easier, let's uh, access this helicopter again. And uh, let's chart where we are going on this mission. You can see the radar unit and the comms unit are on the same island, so let's save time and use the helicopter to get out there. And so, we're reaching the uh, end of the review. Uh, even though this game looks uh, quite uh, chunky, uh, you have to remember it is a, a quite an old game, and it's surprising the amount of features that are packed in there. Uh, the atmosphere and everything else is just superb, to be honest. Look at this. Watching that console. What do I do? Well, I've got two bombs, and the second one's made it for 220 credits. That's how you save time in these missions. So, let's all get rid of that. And the radar unit's just over there. Well, 
sometimes it's possible to save the second bomb for the radar unit if you're very lucky. But I'm going to have to get down there. What is the there's a ground gun waiting to destroy me. And there's a vehicle there if I decide to get killed, which is good. And, uh, yeah, so, back to the plot, I think. Uh, let's get down there. Oh, anti flat gun, <laughs> well, whatever it's called, the uh, the the ground to a flat gun making my life difficult. So before anything else, <laughs> well yeah, let's get rid of that. Oh, I missed it. Asymmetric 3D. It might be primitive. You have to line those things up. You have to make sure, because if there's any enemy in there around the area, they will kill you. Let's speed back to that base. Waste no time in the missions mode. And, and get in there. You have to, just like the SAS and you have to make use of every vehicle, every means necessary. If you get blown up, if you get stopped, just keep going. Find the next thing, blow it up, you know. Uh, find the next vehicle, get on your way. That's definitely a key thing. So 1705. 500 credits and a medal. Well, it's definitely worth doing these missions. Let's do mission three. 1500 quid already. Three wind turbines. Well, that's an easy thing to destroy. Between hour eight of day two. Yep, 1705, it's the same time. Where are they? Well, look at this. They're on the same islands I've just left. If I'd uh, spent just a little time blowing those up, I could walk straight back into the HQ now and tell them I've finished it and save all that time instead of flying out there. But no, I've got to go all the way out to the same spot and blow those things up again. So, that's how you save time. Let's quit this. Yes. And look at the third scenario, the action. Put my name in. Now I must destroy six fuel dumps, four radar units, four enemy forts, one enemy HQ, before hour 12 of day eight. So that is a long time. And it's yet another brand new map. All three scenarios have brand new maps in there. And before I even get to see the map, I'm going to explore the shed and pick one up. Pick up those items. And a handy car is there to uh, whisk me around. Pesky birds. Oh, that is, that's definitely another way to pick up those items is to uh, explore the sheds and there is definitely areas on the uh, on the hunter adventure uh, where you can simply go to islands instead of returning back to the enemy uh, uh, your own HQ sorry your, your, your own allies doors uh, and pick up those items look at that a tank how do you deal with a tank with a tank Drive over that guy, Mr. Bull. Oh. Ground guns dispatched. Let's get rid of this. Oh god, look at these. Where is everything? All the fuel are on one island. All the radar g uh, units are in a line. The enemy forts are scattered and in deep into enemy territory. And the enemy K HQ is in the uh, loneliest spot of all, it seems. So, the fuel dump seems to be the easiest one to take care of, first of all. Where am I now? Uh, well, there's a vehicle down there. Uh, I think that's the car I just left. And that's actually Bull. It looks more like a horse to me, but... <laughs> long legs for Bull. Oh, it got me! So, there are ducks, birds, and... Uh, geese. Look at that, the enemy in tanks. <laughs> Two abreast trying to kill me. That's uh, that's the result of that, and definitely that scenario is the hardest. Well, I've come to the end of this 40 minute review already, and I haven't told you half of the things I needed to tell you about this game. I haven't covered any of it. I don't believe it. Well, needless to say, you'll find all these items in the game, from trucks to uh, windsurfers to tanks, apart from the plane, which is a red herring. Thank you for viewing Hunter. See you again.